guys, today we have Mike Dawes, progressive finger styled guitarist and just all around super cool person. It was an absolute honor to have him on. This is my favorite episode of the podcast thus far. I do need to apologize, I lost the video. We still have the entire audio up for you guys, but the video did get lost and I feel like a terribly incompetent human being, so my apologies. Today we discuss Mike's work and his journey and how he navigated being a musician in the 21st century. We chat about artistic integrity and if musicians and YouTubers are actually being honest with you. And we go in depth into talking producers and production experiences in the studio and what awesome, fabulous ones look like. Let's get into it. Time we didn't, I didn't have to clip out any of the um, the vaping sounds because I just think it was because everyone was. I don't fucking. It's a microphone, Casey. Oh, this one. Okay. God damn it! (laughs) Everything happening right now is why this dynamic works. I'm like literally trying to talk, and he's like, "I'm fucking terrible. I can't use anything." (laughs) This works, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing? (laughs) It's my first day with technology. This is a brilliant. I, 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 I get it. This yeah. this just works. <laughs> this is own. entertaining. Does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you might hate the process, but believe me, it works. Okay, yeah. this is great. Well, thank Mike's, you. Mike's quick to anger. Fantastic. Tell tell ev- tell everyone about it, Mike. Okay. Thank you. We have to uh, we stay need... stay tuned, kids. <laughs> and don't vape. We need code. Not, I think we need kids. code names for the mics. Just call me Dawes. <sighs> code names. Oh oh, we need. I got to separate. Okay, we have Dawes. Everyone's yeah. always confused which mic I'm talking um, about. You can call me fuck. I don't I don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, right. you should probably call me Mike. And then you call- just call us both Mike, so like, whatever. I, I do go by Mike K when I'm not with, yeah. like, close friends. Well, it's, it's <laughs> ironic, because I'm also Mike K. Yeah, it's What, just... really? Well, Mike K, J, Dawes, yeah, yeah. What, really? I have two middle names, because I'm better. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I actually also have two middle names. Fuck! I'm not joking! <laughs> Mine's, uh, Get- Gedman John. Nice. After both my grandfathers. Mine's- Mine's Get Me John. Get me John. <laughs> Get me Joan. Ke- Ketamine Jones. Ketamine Jones. <laughs> Little Ketty Jones. I think Actually. the name for our, for our podcast should be Three Whites. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing overtly politically incorrect about no. that, right? <laughs> we're, we're Three Whites. <laughs> Oh, someone actually had a good idea, like potentially okay idea for the name of the podcast. We still don't have a fucking oh, we okay. don't have a name. Yeah. yeah, we don't. Okay, Mike, yeah. help us come up with the name. Actually, you're yeah, good. you're good at this shit too. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever read his? <laughs> no, but I need oh, we to. We can't talk about that. We can't talk about that on the podcast. Cause I mean, now we can't. They didn't know there was a be... thing until you were all weird about it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you, what... should, you should call the podcast Two Whites. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Two uh, whites. Yeah. I guess I know, so. call it fucking mac and cheese. Or whatever. <laughs> there, oh, that was, that's what it was. Call that it was, Alpha, Alpha Bro Podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just exclusively yeah. getting fucked tips. Call it what women really want is dot dot dot. Mel Gibson. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Mel Gibson. Just call it Mel Gibson. There you go. Chell Mibson. The There's Mel Gibsons. A, Gel, Gel so, Mibson. Yeah, Someone based Gil upon Mibsons. the last. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Someone based upon the last podcast actually said it, it um, should be tuning the people because uh, Dylan oh, was also talking cool, about yeah. that. That's like it's not it's and not terrible. And for and for it being the kind of uh, like it having been said on the first, you know, the the launch shit. What's the word? The inaugural. The yeah. The, inaugural. You know, the, I would, the, I'm not. I'm not gonna call any of these inaugural because I imagine it's gonna be an ever evolving process. So it's like yeah, but it was yeah. the first one with first one me. person. Yeah. Um, Tuning yeah, so. the people. That's not terrible. It's actually know. pretty sick. Oh, you it's could, also kind of arrogant though. It's like we're gonna tune the like. It, it, it's not kind it's, of con- it, asserting control without knowing the context. It is a little bit like presumptuous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. I mean, as a Brit, I have major like major hyper aware radar of anything remotely like that mm. it's like very like be, be careful what everyone thinks all the time you know yeah oh my god okay <laughs> all I right Mike, so how'd you get your start in music <laughs> oh okay, my god let's even, let's even before first... that T- talk to us as if we have no idea who you are what do you do mike oh, okay well, well yeah so my name's mike uh Dawes from england and it's great to be here with you fine gentlemen again especially uh Appreciative of Casey's time working on some tunes with me this afternoon, which is super fun, fun man. And yeah. the last time I saw you was like Thanksgiving, right? Uh, I think Did it might have been might have been one 
Is it, oh, yeah, it was Thanksgiving. I think I was right. Yeah. Nearly a year, damn. Well, yeah, but basically, yeah. So I, I'm a guitar player, mainly like acoustic guitar. Um, I mean, I'm talking to you guys. I should probably talk to you guys because you guys both know. So I play acoustic guitar, like finger style guitar would be the, the, the name that people like to assign to it, where instead of like playing guitar with, with a guitar pick, I, I get rid of that and, and I grow my, my nails to gross weird lengths, uh, almost like a, a crack spoon or something. Anyway, uh, when I do that, it enables me to get multiple parts on one instrument, basically. So you can use your thumb to get bass, you know, harmony, melody, percussion, all that stuff. And and, and I tour a lot, uh, doing a kind of one-man show, uh, playing Tommy that Emmanuel. kind of stuff. Two men in the case of uh, the gracious opening slots with the great Tommy Emmanuel, aka yeah. the king Ooh. of music and guitar, the greatest guitar player of all time, in my opinion, although I'm sure we can debate that. that could be quite cer fun. Certified guitar player. Certified guitar player, Fuck yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I also open for and play alongside a guy called Justin Haywood, who's the front man and songwriter for the Moody Blues, and then various other sessions and TV and ad adverts and things and stuff, general music industry shenanigans, but mainly I'm known as an instrumental acoustic guitar player, yeah. And you also have a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel? I do. It is my name and then the word official because I made it when I was about 16 when I thought that, oh, I don't want there to be an unofficial one. There isn't an unofficial one even to this day. So, yeah, but type in Mike Dawes, D-A-W-E-S. And, uh, yeah, I do a bunch of original music covers a lot of people like the covers a lot of people like the originals i'm very blessed for that and also they like to learn the style as well so i do a lot of like tuition online you know so a lot of stuff on my website which is mikedoors.com uh i i do like tuition about how to how to play this kind of unusual style you know playing the guitar like a drum while you play in alternate tunings and you do the tapping and the harmonics all the geek if you're a guitar nerd you might find something like that useful so that's all out there as well yeah, the uh, the first time, and this is kind of embarrassing because we were friends for a few years before this, but uh, or at least knew about each other. But the first thing I saw that you did was the Metallica one cover. Oh right, yeah, and that was spectacular to me because <clears throat> you just covered you. It was it was harmonically the entire piece on one instrument, and you conveyed the, the feel and the backbeat with this that one instrument. Thanks, and man. yeah, that was so cool. And uh, that's a really fun example of the style, actually, because like that that whole thing, like every cover I do, I try to base in some kind of like emotional investment. Like there is a reason to do specific covers rather than them just being like a top ten song, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, every guitar player one is like that first song, or at least for me, maybe for you guys as well, where it's like, oh my god, like tapping crazy guitar solo the double kick bit you know there's these iconic phrases in that song and that whole thing was kind of done working backwards you know like as soon yeah. as you play those first notes bum 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 you know that every guitar player and every drummer is going to be like i need to keep watching this because how the is he gonna yeah. do that bit? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's this whole like six... You can say fuck, by the way. I can say fuck. Excellent. Okay, well, they're saying, how, <laughs> how the flipping heck is he gonna do that bit, right? And uh, and that was part of the fun, was taking people on that journey with that song and, um, uh, yeah, starting slow, building up, and uh, ultimately I have to cheat and use a loop pedal at the end. But uh, check it out. The video's online, and it's, uh, it's a fun one. I don't, I don't, I don't want to relegate you to those types of guys that do that though because to me the loop pedal thing is so tired and, I, and some people do it great and some people rely on it because they are you know busking or whatever it is or it's part of their band whatever it, it can be done really cool but what's so cool about you is that i mean at least the last time i saw you play live i think you used it once over the course of an hour yeah that's, and, that's and pretty you really justified the use of it though thanks man that's, and, that's fucking I, jerk I, him I, off some more I, oh, Jesus I love it Christ. thank you it thank was you, spectacular Casey. seriously it was spectacular you should have been there if I, I, I get it yeah I, my, Mike does actually our, yeah. our, 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 <laughs> our future guest uh, Brandon Paddock mm. I, I brought him with me and like halfway through he like tapped me. He like tapped me and was like, "Dude, thank you so much for inviting me to this." Yeah, oh, sick. Okay. And he That's was sweet, and, and Mike, you weren't um, you were quite unpsyched about the entire situation having having been. Well, it was the first show of a tour. And, it, yeah. Well, it's it was the first show of a tour. It was a late announce. I didn't know if anyone was going to show up, and it's Nashville, which. As anyone who's played in Nashville will know, it's not... Especially guitar players. Yeah, guitar players. it's like Nashville's yeah. a market where it's not... People aren't usually the most stoked when there's a guitar show. It's just like supply and demand, right? Well, it's also fucking... Um, 
like everyone's working even if they want to see you or it's like half your friends being like hey give me tickets yeah it's, it's just yeah from the outside it seems like a guitar show is just not special if i go to freaking clearwater florida and i play it's special you know what i mean like there's it's an event um but it was it was really well sold it was a great show it was a really rowdy show which reminded me of playing in like bars in england that's where i kind of started was just literally going to bars and playing and like learning how to like control a crowd even though i'm mm. playing instrumentally and like reach the drunk guy at the back of the room learning, you know? learning how to tune the people tune the people if you will exactly <laughs> call back to uh to mr dovidas um but yeah i appreciate the nice words about the show man but yeah the loop thing it, it's interesting there's these throughout my guitar and you know professional performance journey there's always these kind of moments where you're, you're on the fence about is it okay to do x or y and then you have to push yourself past that and mm -hmm. then you become sort of more original i think like there was a time in my kind of playing journey where i would just be like can i write this would andy mckee do this mm. if the answer is no then i wouldn't because i don't want to do something that you're not allowed to do and he was actually the oh, first really? player in your vein if you could call it that that i ever saw right well he was and he still is but really blew up at the start of youtube you know yes. like, there was a time mm. where i think the the two or three biggest videos on youtube were andy's videos you know and this Holy was shit. obviously i was i was 16 when that came out big influence of course and, and i'm very fortunate to call to call him a friend but the, the point i'm trying to say is and you're when teaching you, at his camp now which yes is another yeah thing that's actually yeah. Soon, yeah i don't i don't know if it's announced yet but every year i i i do these guitar camps with other musicians and i believe i'll be a guest at andy's uh next year although it's not announced but i guess it is now um and uh <laughs> we can we can cut that if, if need be oh it's fine whatever like just if you're right reading seeing watching watching Video. Any, any, By the time this is out, those, it might as if you're, very well if you're consuming announced, so. the, I mean, the, the, the I capitalist yeah. pig you are. Yeah, if exactly. You're consuming That's this. it. Uh, just let me just say, if you're in Nashville in August 2023, there'll be some good stuff there, hopefully. Um, but the point I'm, I was trying to make there, just so I get it out of my head, is that it's a really valuable thing to learn that trying something new, or at least taking a different approach to, to something is really valuable because it adds to what makes you unique. It's like, there's only one Gojira, right? There's only one, like, periphery. There's a lot of imitators, but they're the ones who kind of innovate to get to that kind of stage in their sound. A really, really small example of that is what you're saying about, okay, I used a loop pedal in that show only maybe once in a whole show. That perhaps then would eliminate the I eliminate maybe a journalist saying this guy's looping everything yeah. because I saw him use it once and I don't understand everything else. They could very easily say I saw him looping. He must be a, a quote looping guy, and it takes actually a, a little bit of confidence to to do that and run that risk if you're if technique is the crux you're going to lean on so it takes another uh. amount of confidence to to although you're playing very technical music not rely on the technique as a crux to to promote what you're doing yeah, yeah that's that's a great part of your your uh, live routine is your engagement with the crowd your little bits like stand like uh, stand up comedian style <laughs> stage presence oh, that's it what so there was you know uh, earlier today we were discussing i think this would be interesting is we were discussing the point at which you've established yourself as an artist and you know there's different ways you could go about growing your brand just getting gaining popularity to whatever it is and you know there are cheap ways of doing it like releasing a record of covers was the one that you cited as being something that you could be like well i can guarantee that if i do that i'll make a bunch of money and i'll like it'll i'll i'll, I'll gain a lot of popularity that i currently don't have but you don't go that route and you and I, I feel it has something to do with your sense of artistic integrity or does it not and what's what's where's the line uh i th so yeah to elaborate on that um obviously nothing's guaranteed but what i was kind of referring to is a lot of my biggest videos <clears throat> are cover songs like you cited the metallica song like yeah. obviously not just you know the friends of guitar players the general public who don't play guitar might be interested in seeing someone play a Metallica song all at once live almost like walk off the earth did with somebody that I used to know like five people on one guitar yeah. they might be interested in that but if it's an original it takes like you have to be more of a music fan to, to, to click that right typically so, so if you have no reference exactly to, be able exactly. to, to actually give with a instrumental yeah. music like giving someone a reference to hold on to will will get greater clicks typically in my scene that's true like a lot of the people who do it for a living and stay in the online realm just do covers and that's all they do they'll do anime covers or they'll do whatever's in the top 10 covers or say you know a, a celebrity dies then they'll cover that song or whatever but 
I've always kind of existed in, in the live realm of just wanting to make things and then play them to people. And if they like it, great. And I'm very, very, very lucky that I've been able to make a living doing that. Uh, I've, it, it's, it's never really been a conscious decision. It's almost been, why would I change what I've been doing? It's worked out so far. I haven't really had to think about it. What comes out, comes out. And it just so happens that the covers that I do, like I mentioned earlier, have all kind of had... Uh, there's, there's always been an emotional intent behind it. There's been a reason to do it. I did a Periphery cover because they're like some of my best mates. Yeah. I did a Titanium David Guetta cover because my friend Sarah used to live above me and I woke up every morning <laughs> to her playing it on the piano. You know, I did a Somebody oh, cool. that, that I used to know, Gautier cover because of a breakup of all things. It's a breakup song. You know, there's always a reason to do it. It mm. isn't, this song's popular, let me cover it. Right, so... Never uh, really tapping into like an algorithmic hype or... No, no, the, the, the only like algorithm play I do, and I'm sure like Mike can relate to this, is like trying to get a good title in the thumbnail i guess that's don't, like don't get me fucking started oh <laughs> well God. dude i could learn a lot from you about that because i i i do have some big youtube videos they have helped my career but i do it rarely enough that i tend to like lose track of like what's current you yeah. know what i mean yeah, so man. i'm always interested in talking to you guys and, and and getting little advice about that but uh what's his domain for sure. yeah right for sure i, I fucking wish it wasn't i i don't it, it's necessary and it sucks and it's just become so fucking psychologically exploitative that it makes me feel a little gross, you know, but, um, reason number three will shock you <laughs> or no, yeah. it's reason number 10 of 10 reasons but, I mean, every, and it's at the end of the video. You're, yeah. you're kind, you're kind of in yeah. a, um, what do you call it? Uh, what's the game, the game theory scenario yeah. where ev if everyone has to do it because there's always going to be one person who's going to be exploiting it and if you want to remain competitive that's well, the just same what you have thing to with do. the same thing with highly processing your guitar sound on a record you know nowadays yeah. especially i mean on that point like i got pretty lucky with the title recently like at the top of this year i did i have a song called the impossible that's just the name of the song i did it 10 years ago so i can a really good song there's gonna be a camera on you we know it's you beautiful <laughs> thank you so much uh yeah so 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 that tune was written before clickbait you know what i mean it was written at a time where the song's called the impossible because it's about an uh, it's about an impossible emotional attachment it's a long story i won't go into it but i was able to title it playing the impossible on guitar it's the Shining actual song's great. name yet obviously phrasing it like that got more clicks and it did it got like millions of views you said that's great. 10 years old the song i wrote in 2012 yeah Oh, but the, but you recorded the video later. That video, yeah, was recent. Okay, yeah, okay. I did that with Riff Hard. So I was going to say, uh, if that video is 10 years old, I'm like, what camera were you using? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the 8K sweet. Blackmagic rig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit, dude. No, there was a new video. But um, yeah, the clickbait thing, if I can call it that, I guess I'm trying to use your terminology, man. But the idea of, of marketing something that you put your heart and soul into is an interesting one. I've always thought of it as like... If you imagine a semicircle, and then you've got one half of the semicircle being the creative the creative process, like completely pure, like I'm going to make what I want to make, then the second half of the semicircle is how do I best release that and how do I market it effectively, percent, right? Yeah. You've got to keep the two separate because with music especially, like you can trick someone into clicking, but you can't trick someone into staying. Yes. You know what I mean? So th oh. the art has to be pure. The art has to be the best thing you can possibly do, and you have to tap into this unspoken thing. But that second half of the semicircle, I'll do everything I can to make you click on it, of course. 100%. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I'm not writing things to to trick people. I'm writing my my me, whatever it is that is in here and I want to put out. Well, it's just that the, second half that, that I like to you know, at, work on. At the on. end of the day, people just got to give a shit. So, like, obviously, you got to put out the quality, like you're talking about, the thing that keeps them there. Or, I guess, thinking about it in fucking YouTube terms, the watch time, you know, the engagement. Audience <clears throat> retention. And that's, that's the whole reason why I started my channel. I've been very vocal about that from the beginning. Um, I basically was like... I'm going to start this so I can build a fan base for and actually do the music shit that I really want to do. Yeah. And that's the, the whole idea of does the audience give a shit? And if you want them to go to something brand new, brand spanking new, it either needs to be the greatest shit ever made that's just genius level, perfect timing, or you need to give them a reason to give a shit about you. Yeah. And you 
sadly have to ride off of other people's shit giving. <laughs> so so what, what do you mean by that? Like ride off other people's shit giving? So like you do the cover songs or like a lot of people do cover songs. Like, like you establish that on YouTube in particular, there's like a market for a specific type of video. Someone else, there's dude, a precedent, so you do it. Dude, I like barely get any fucking views without talking about Metallica nowadays. I don't know if you've noticed. Dude, the, we the started off talking fucking... about Metallica. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Gosh, Thanks, Casey. Appreciate it. If I can, Mike, Mike does is five secrets to the perfect Metallica cover. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It writes itself. <laughs> There's not even, I'm not even going to list five secrets. I'm just going to put that in there. <laughs> I like it. Okay. They, can, they can count it themselves. Yeah. 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 Do you think like f from your point of view is like, I'm going to call you a professional YouTuber. Is that fair? That's, That's completely fair. fair. Um, from your point of view, I've completely... Okay, I've completely... glass. I got a fucking fruit fly in this <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, don't, don't dump it. Set it up there so they get attracted to it. No, there, there's another one up there for them. These, these fruit flies are alcoholics. Okay, well, okay, <laughs> set, set it up there so more, more of them go in. But I, I want to pour what's in here in the new cup. Okay. That's I don't want to waste all this. Yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fruit fly problem in this, in this studio. We need to figure that out. <laughs> I woke up with one in my ear last night. <laughs> Yeah, terrific. Yeah, it is. They, they get. Will you hold this for a sec. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's soft. They, they this do. is all staying in, by the way. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. I was recording this girl last week, and one flew into her mouth while she was hitting a high note. Fucking taking the back, she, and it <laughs> sounded awesome. Yeah, did the take and stay it's, in? And it's, yeah, and I'm keeping the take. I mean, yeah, it actually sounded awesome. Dude, got, got it sounded like emotion. Absolutely, some of the best. I've got because um, it was I, it was discussed. I think on one of my songs on one recording, I have like I hit a bend and I break a string and it stays in. It doesn't even sound like a string break. It just it just sounds, it sounds cool. gnarly, you know. Yeah, mic mic on the on the mic. Sorry, there sir. You there you're good. You're good. Um, what was the question that you had? Oh, dude, I can't remember. Oh, fair enough. I'm talking about fruit flies now. Fair enough. <laughs> just sitting here being proclaimed a professional YouTuber, I guess. Yeah. Is that how I'm gonna die? Is that how I'm gonna be remembered? Is that's so, all that's okay, be so, left so, to me? so so here's a question. So is that is that a tainted term? Is that a, like because it's not? To I me, wouldn't I mean, say it's a tainted term for most people. A lot of people like think it's kind of like sleek and cool and modern and shit. A lot it of people is. don't understand it as well. They don't understand oh my the monetization. God. Every time there's like someone that like I've known for a while and then they like if they finally realize like this is what I do for a living. It's like so like how do you like, do you make money from like ads and stuff? Like yeah. fucking oh God, I'm not I'm not going into this. It's, I just say it's very scalable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a big scope. You made the money from the description, man, or in the pinned comments. I mean, that's that's a thing. Like, I really enjoy, um, like, a, a lot of the the the, the non-touring work that I do is is the tuition courses that I've made, and I'm very fortunate that people find them through the video descriptions. You know, that's that's kind of how it works for me. But I, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of content. I, I I don't upload that many YouTube videos, so I guess the ads aren't aren't a huge thing. From this end, anyway, at least. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, are you actually are you monetized? Yeah. Okay, cool. But it's not like you know. I mean, dude, I'll <laughs> upload maybe like three music videos a year, and that's my YouTube channel. Oh fuck yeah. And then it's the like, occasional uh, like ad for a course, or the occasional like I I don't really do, you, do the vlog thing so much. You but, don't mind me um, asking, how much do you make off of streaming? Or you don't have to give an exact number, but like like guesstimation. Enough. And, and and this is a really interesting conversation because I I think I saw a punk rock NBA episode today about Spotify and that the same old okay. debate I, about I gave, yeah. I, gave, I gave him big props on that but also I did that video multiple times last year. <laughs> that was my just, question. Just yeah. say <laughs> that was my question. That was as a professional YouTuber. Does this not? I mean, <clears throat> someone will see a theme that works and then ten other people will do the same theme. Does that not get okay? So. Okay, I guess we're getting into this. So, okay, I don't blame. Thin, I don't blame. The exact same conversation that. earlier about originating your own style as an yeah. artist. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't, well, yeah. Fuck it, YouTube is very little art. <laughs> it's also very little. No, substance. it's just the idea of doing something first and others taking credit for. Well, giving you credit but reaping a majority of the benefits for some reason. This happens right, in the finger style guitar scene too. So, yeah. if I, when, it, when it comes to the whole Spotify thing, like at first I was like, yeah, fuck it, like, I kind of did this, but like Finn had his own take on it. Where we we basically agree, but he does his own, he did his own thing. Even though I would love to know where he got his Spotify takes thirty percent statistic. I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, well, I, I'd, I'd I'd love to know where you got that one. Well, I don't know the statistics specifically, but I mean, oh, I it do. Is, well, <laughs> yeah. t t t your question about like streaming revenue, like without going to specific <laughs> figures, I'm one guy without a label, and I do it myself, and that is the way to do it. Like, 
really it, it, it is a model that works now the, the bigger question about spotify harming the great the value of music um it's it's hard for me to dive in on that too hard because i was in university studying music and music business at a time just before spotify launched when we were all sweating about piracy and no one was selling anything no one was monetizing anything yeah. so it is i'm a bit more glass half full with that but Anyone with a historic record deal, okay, case case in point, my first record was with a label, my second record was independent. All my streaming money comes from the second one. What a shock. Right. <laughs> and and that money pays my mortgage and it pays my bills. I'm almost that, right? like so, the record label takes 50% of you got everything. It. If the you record label... If, if you ain't yeah. seen his video that breaks down all that shit, it's, it's, it's the most informative one I'd love to check I've it out. ever yeah. seen on it. But I mean, I, I don't know that the specific data, all I see is numbers from my own output in terms yeah. of what I actually get. Absolutely. And and the, the, the record label from my first album, I do get money how from much, and how I much have money, benefited from in a great deal. How course. much money did they give you for that first one? Like, like, like what, to, my label to, advance. Yeah, that to fund to fund it to make it. Uh, I I'd rather not go into the specific number, but okay. not a lot because it's one guy on an acoustic guitar. Okay, so like no. they didn't they didn't loan Shark you? No, okay, no, good. it was okay. a very uh, look for a student. Great, but oh, it, fuck it, yeah, it didn't even it didn't cover the recording, let alone the artwork, the mastering, and the production. You know what I mean? It was it was less than what was needed. But it was less to recoup, and and my deals. That's my, a, that's actually uh, honestly yeah. that that to me sounds like a more um, honest offer if they give you less than what was needed. It, it, and the numbers we're talking about aren't huge because bear in mind my first record was there was a few guest musicians. One of them I gave him a bottle of wine, and the other one I think I bought him a sandwich. And I was that's one nice. guy, and my engineer was charging me 150 pounds a day, and in each day I was doing right. like two tracks. That's, you not, know what that's I mean? not bad. No, not at all. And then you pay another couple of hundred quid to him to master it. You know what I mean? This was yeah, like yeah. student budget album. Sounded great. It, it just so happened he was an amazing producer, and I still work with him to this day. But um, See the but, guy that did the, yeah, the show we worked he's on? A, a, yeah. Everything I've done. He is the best yeah, tracker. Are we allowed to say his name? Yeah, Josh Clark, Get Real Josh Audio Clark. in the UK. He, so okay, he's like, he plays in Kate Rosby's band, who's uh, an acoustic artist. She's very well known in the UK. Uh, but he's a bluegrass producer, so he get, he's the recordings that we've done are very in your face, very real. Cool, you know what I mean. So this next record that I'm doing, I, I'm, I'm going to try and do something a little bit different. Hence, uh, coming over here and, and tinkering with Casey, which has been a lot oh, of fun. Oh, I, I fucking listened to it. It's yeah. really cool. Different vibe. Looking forward to this next one is for it, sure. The, the people who are guesting on on this one, uh, is it going to be a similar type of vibe for the rest of the album? Is it going to be the same people? There's going to be more guests, but. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of solo stuff as well. Uh, I, I have varied guests as well. I have a fiddle player on one track who actually is... Uh, she's Blake Shelton's player, and she plays with Steven Tyler. And people yeah. like that. Yeah, so, I, re so I really want to mix that one. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll send it over, man. We'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, bring, I'll bring the projects over next time. But um, but where were we? The Spotify yeah, question, Spotify, right? yeah. yeah. Well, the, the deals that I made back in the day <laughs> were geared towards uh, touring. But... <laughs> I didn't know how much I'd be touring, and that actually worked out to my benefit, mm -hmm. because what ended up happening is I was playing in a scene that CDs were a hot commodity, could you believe, and they still are, because I'm playing to an audience of acoustic music fans who want to have a memory item from a show, but and, instead and of it being a t-shirt... It's a more analog type of exactly, thing. Exactly, yeah. it's a CD. So a lot of the that first record, the deal, I was actually pretty happy with, because I basically didn't have to pay to have any of the CDs made, and they took their cut from the CDs from my back-end digital. That's not so terrible. So I might not have seen the back-end digital, but I could then take these free CDs and sell them for a price that I deemed appropriate, which may oh, have okay. been a g greater than what they would have taken their cut from. You see what I mean? Yeah. Say I'm selling it for 15 yeah. instead of 10, and they're taking 5. You know what I mean? So so that, because of all the, the volume of shows I was doing... It worked out quite beneficial in the long run. So you're, you're not so you're not recouping a cost at that point. You're just doing a rev share. So you, you never had to have that upfront investment, which is actually kind of based upon what you're telling me. It sounds like it's very spread out. Like I have fingers and, and different revenue sources and different systems being advance or or a fee yeah, or yeah. or whatever. And I have it very very diversified. Do you have, do you have to shit that. again? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you're good. Uh, fucking, um, no, it sounds like, like to me, you actually had a pretty good relationship with your label. Yeah, I don't have a bad... It's Candy Rat Records, and they, they, oh, okay. they really were, and I, I, 
I guess in some ways maybe still are I'm just a little out of touch with the YouTube thing in their area they they, they were launched Andy McKee they launched a lot of players and oh, they, they certainly okay. launched me they were uh, um, the, they're the hottest subscribed kind of YouTube area for Fingerstar Guitar obviously are, now, are they truly indie a, a, a guy at home in Wisconsin with his wife. Fuck yeah! All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's like they're not they're not part of a conglomerate. They probably might have like a distro deal or something, but they're not like yeah. Okay. At the time, gotcha. the deal made sense, but then moving on to the second record, it made a lot more sense to go independent just because I didn't need that advance. Yeah. I had been working. I didn't need the money. Uh, and, and, and he's probably happy because he helped someone who's a really talented fucking artist actually get their name out oh, there. Thanks, man. Well, I hope he's happy. I hope he's not upset that I decided not to renew. Um, that was another yeah. thing. Like, mm. And this is a piece of advice. If you, for some reason you decide to work with a record label, if you're listening or watching, I don't know why you would at this stage, depending on your genre and your market. If you're doing anything remotely niche, I don't know why you'd go with a record label. But if you did, just just get a licensing thing or something for one album don't get tied in for a lot of stuff fuck no because I was able to see the terrain change and then just jump ship and be independent and there was no legal issue with yeah, that it's great at to all, be able to know? be that adaptable oh. let's, let's play a let's play a thought experiment here so Casey you are producing mixing engineering all that shit us how would you feel if we decided to take on a label well for me I mean in my capacity as a producer chances are that you would have more money to throw at me. I mean, so that's good. You know, I mean... And we, and we would. But that might fuck you in the long run because, I mean, I've seen... I've produced bands before where they, uh, you know, they were in, they were in such bad debt. You know, the, the you do the record, then the label, for whatever reason, shelves it for a year or two. By the point it comes out, it ain't relevant anymore. How how much would, how much would the label be down your throat as far as, like, or even God, down our even, throats? Dude, it's... As the producer, like I've I've produced for bands on labels before. I'm not going to say their names, but uh, uh, there was one, there was one band, a big, big metalcore band I produced vocals for, real big. You've all heard of him, if I, you know, and the the label owners were Metallica. Down, yeah, <laughs> the label the label owners were down their down my throat playing producer, the the entire time they were at the studio the whole time. Uh, short of telling me which takes they would they were like I mean actually no they did that okay. <laughs> but yeah no they did it was it was super like it was it was borderline like a violation of of yeah. of, of, of you know I just felt like what am I just but an that's, engineer but that's not, like, you're trying, you're trying to look engineer. for the word consent did they violate your consent Casey well, I certainly didn't consent to that arrangement <laughs> well this yeah. didn't this isn't exclusive of labels this is just like people that that are indecisive, indecisive musicians who don't know what they want. Well, these weren't yeah. the musicians, though. These were. This was the late. Yeah, the but I don't orders. think that's something you could specifically say is a label issue. That's just like some people you work with are going to be more. Yeah, so some people know, are a little indecisive bit more and or know. just control freak. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And and like I think the label thing, it depends entirely on the deal. It depends entirely on where you're at in your career. It depends entirely on the genre, and it depends on how much you want to work. Because like I set up my own label for the second album. Uh, named after my friend's eye moisturizer for some reason. <laughs> and, and the process of that was... What's the, name, what's the name of it? Q10 Records, Nivea Q10 eye moisturizer. <laughs> if you work for Nivea, please don't sue. Um, but basically, <laughs> all that is was... It, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's not like I made a company in Delaware. I just freaking named it Q10 Records, and I went through TuneCore and released it, and that's what you can do nowadays, you know? Um, but that's me, one guy, acoustic guitar. If you're doing a whole band, or you're in the country scene, or in the pop scene, you need this infrastructure. You need radio. Label is the way to do radio. You know, la label helps. Uh, labels help a great deal with radio. You is, know? is is radio really worth it? Yes. Uh, so, uh, radio I'm is still surprising. trying to figure out why, dude. Uh, but I know, I know it is. I know radio it is, is surprisingly country. worth it. Like, uh, the, uh, first of all, royalties like serious, in, like insanely in a, in a good is royalties. Insane. It's stupid. It's like, stupid. You're, you're gonna have Yucca on at some point, right? He's actually yeah. getting yeah, here yeah, now. Absolutely. I think. Like, oh, like, sick. like I know, like the the royalty structure for radio is all towards writers and almost nothing to do with masters owners. He would be a fascinating guy to talk to about radio from the European oh, perspective oh, because we're, we're gonna, because he's all yeah. about German. Radio radio you know what i mean I, um, ide ideally we're gonna have yuka and paddock on separately and then i want to have like a regular both yuka and paddock and we just get drunk and just fucking talk yeah it's sounds fucking good that would be very interesting <laughs> shit sorry sorry vibrations that would be interesting for you guys for sure if you're interested in like sync and publishing and all that come on up where is he i don't know no he no you're, he's pointing at the I camera, was pointing at the camera. <laughs> oh, I'm saying you guys. Oh. it's a thing we do in, in the entertainment industry casey we, we we talk to the camera as if it was the people watching <laughs> 
Man, I'm so glad I decided not to be an artist for a living. <laughs> <laughs> you'd you'd yeah, be a really you, good you one. Would, yeah. You would you would you would throw down some controversial lines. <laughs> okay, I, if you do decide to do an artist, you should let me produce you. No, well, I mean, I'm I am an artist, and I'm always going to be releasing music as myself on, uh, you know, on, on through DistroKid. Uh, yeah. Because I have there's so much I have to say that's not appropriate for any other. Any, anything else I'm just gonna always make my own music as a solo artist for fun and if it takes off for whatever reason then great but I I hate playing live I'll never do that what are you laughing at all of the really non-politically correct lyrics I'm replacing for Candle in the Dark <laughs> it's only funny to me I'm sorry I love that song Thanks. yeah it's a great song it's a great song Thanks, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say them later off off the recording <laughs> mm. yeah I've been really thankful to Mike man he like he's he uh, before his song suggestion uh, live streams on Fridays and Saturdays. He usually plays one of my one of my solo songs. Oh, so. yeah. And I've and I, I always see like a a little spike in nice. activity. Thank you to you guys. Yeah. Okay. Fans are excellent. Fans can also be sometimes pretty fucking stupid. And I encourage all of you to get your fucking shit together. I love you to death, and I wouldn't tell you this unless I actually respected you. scorning the audience? No, not scorning the I audience. I love you guys. I love no, all of you equally. Yeah, yeah okay, asshole. Mr. Galatarian. Please subscribe fucking... to Mike Dawes Official. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's what I mean. Okay. <laughs> Am I so doing there, it? There, there, there Hello, seems, fellow kids. It seems like there's a high level of contempt for the audience that's hidden behind the veil of a whole bunch of fucking niceties that you, think needs you, to disappear. You know, you know what's interesting? Um, well, I think it's interesting. I, I feel like a lot of creators, and and I'll say artists in this as well, because I know a lot of artists who are, fall under the YouTuber bracket and that their living is mainly online through putting out music videos on the regular. I feel like a lot of them maybe do treat the audience like they're dumb. God and, damn it. And, no and, shit. God damn it. Okay. Could, okay. Could, could I, I, I'm not going to say how I have the evidence, no, but I have plenty of fucking evidence of that. Yes. Dude, this is, okay, so one of the, <laughs> this is one of my, this is actually one of my, one of my biggest things that I've realized recently because I've been thinking a lot about it since Mike months ago. No, hold on, hold on, Casey. We've got to talk pitched. more about the loop pedal first. That was far more interesting far more than this interesting, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> when he, when he first pitched the idea for this podcast to me, the premise, the premise was kind of like, what's the difference between an artist and a clout chaser? Let's talk about that. Let's, you know, articulate. Oh, we, we definitely and need to, to dive into that. We will. Some point. Well, I think, I think I've come, I think I've come, I think I've come to I, one of them. I'm one just, of the I'm things. going to clip that out there. What? <laughs> I think, never nothing. Move on. on. One, 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 one of the, 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 one Sorry, sorry, guys. Hey, continue. One of the most widely practiced approaches to production and songwriting um, that I think is indicative of clout chasing rather than trying to create art. What are you guys doing? Stop asking oh. how much he wants. One of the most offensive and obnoxious and I think poisonous behaviors, practices, um, is is dumbing is, is usually, it, sometimes it's called dumbing it down. Not necessarily simplifying, but but holding... Uh, basically, what's the, the the phrase is like playing to the lowest common denominator. Basically, mm -hmm. not expecting more of your audience, expecting less. Absolutely. That to me is is clearly indicative of profit seeking, necessarily over. Let's Got create of let, evidence of that let's, too. Some, let's create. <laughs> let's create versus let's create something that is going to challenge people, make the world a better place. Because and that you will stand behind and it's the best you can do. And there's, there's an, yeah, no, and there's enough deficiencies in the world that any thinking person can address with their art. But if they're not doing that and they're playing to the lowest common denominator, quote, then I mean, it, what? Can I? Can I? I was God about to say, can it. I? Can I hit the happy medium between the two perspectives? So I think you're. I share that perspective, by the way, like 100. percent Oh yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, 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 and I'm so sick of it as a producer. Like I'm, I'm so done with 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 not not simplifying things to make more people like them. But like, but telling them like like with lyrics, for example, because I'm a huge lyrics guy. Yeah, he's and, a lyrics man. And yeah. when I and when I start with producing a song, I always start with well, what let's let's look at the lyrics. Let's make sure the lyrics are great, and let's figure out what it is that you're trying to say, what's the message of this, or what's what's the experience that you want to create for the listener, what's the experience you're trying to describe what, that happened in your life or whatever, and what's the moral of it, what's the lesson that you're trying to convey. Yeah. And um, 
And it's always like I get it a lot where where artists will be like, oh well, I'll they'll, they'll show me the lyric. I'm like, dude, come on, these lyrics are kind of cliche. Everyone's heard the. You know, face adversity, and that makes you better. Pox, message for yeah. whatever it is, I'm some cliche out by the message. Lake and I'm like, Fe, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's actually, a great song. Yeah, it's, a great, by the it's a great produced song. <laughs> and and oftentimes I'll, we'll we'll have a discussion about what what is the the emotion or the idea that they are really interested in in experiencing, and they they always rather than trying to dig in deeper and find something insightful that maybe hasn't been said yet and might take a little bit more effort on the listeners, listeners part to, to learn from, they don't want to do that. They want to go to the thing that the listener already agrees with. Yeah. Already figured out, already knows. And in, in this way, like our friend Anthony says, it ends up being rather than an experience that you, that you, while paying attention, learn from, from the art, it ends up kind of acting like a mirror, the art. Like a like in, like it's like an exercise in vanity. He, he or said something. he says it's a mirror. I say it's a an exercise in masturbation. Yeah, vanity mirror. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 really it's, just getting masturbated. Well, if, if you're, you, if you, you you become you become a literal whore at that point, and instead of physically touching someone to where it's socially unacceptable, you're providing them a very similar chemical release via sound. Well, it's or, or story. I, I just don't understand story. Or story. Yeah. Well, I, I can relate to that in the in the acoustic guitar world actually because first of all, I don't understand why anyone would want to put something out when they haven't just tried their best. I just I can't understand that. Like, why why would you put something out to hit a deadline, or it's got to be simple enough that they'll buy the tab, or it's got to be you know uh, it's got to be easy. It's got to it's it's got to tick boxes. I, I, there's a lot of musicians who will put things out because it has to tick these boxes that they have in their head. Because I genuinely think that they don't think the audience is smart enough to understand I, I don't know I, I feel like it's just I feel like it's offensive to the audience I feel I don't blame the people I, yeah. I, I blame the, the I blame the culture around the generation if I'm being honest because I blame, of instant gratification <laughs> and that, yeah well dude I mean <laughs> yeah, the, 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 yeah the the, uh, the lack of, of but, uh, but preference so, for the so there's, there's some guitar players I know and it's no shade on them at all it's yeah. just they're yeah, younger yeah, yeah. and it's the generation it's you know I want to get views I want to get popular so I'm going to make this thing quickly it's going going to tick these boxes and it's going to get get these views i've always and i'll say to them like do you not want to just like spend instead of maybe three days on this song maybe just like let it cook for a month and see if you yeah. you know maybe try hard to make it special and they're like oh no i won't because then i'll the algorithm won't like it or whatever and and that i've just i've never had that. i've never i've never wanted to put something out when i haven't just tried my best to make it the, the the most wonderful thing I could possibly do I, in that moment, you yeah, know. Yeah, and then I've never been a, never been ashamed of a low performing video as a result because I can stand behind that. You yeah, know? yeah. That's the I, thing. I, w- I, I wouldn't it's... I wouldn't mind it as long as they're being honest with their audience with what's going on. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't think people are ever honest about it when they're treating them like they don't know anything. It's, I it's... I am. <laughs> <laughs> I very much am. Well, yeah, but I'm, okay. So I'm I'm talking from the point of view of people who are are creating music and music alone and that's it they're putting out something and they're that it makes it a lot harder it exactly lot harder they're putting something out that they think the audience will like rather than putting something out that they're immensely proud of right yes and i think that would answer the question about the difference between an artist and a as you say clout chaser right or or, or just a product cre- like the idea that I, the way that i typically say it is that art can end up or rather you know a, a song or a movie it and it in in the in a market economy, it ends up as a product, but it shouldn't. But art is too important to be created as a product. Yeah. I, th- I think create to, to, art. I don't think it's ever. Don't a create product. it to be a product. There's it two, ends up as a product, oh, yeah. but when it's created as one, you're you're poisoning exactly. So two an interesting names for, for right? creating fuel okay. for humanity. So two names that I'd love to throw into that to hopefully prove what we're saying is correct. Who, who are you, who Tommy are Emmanuel and oh, yeah. the 1975. Oh, I love that. <laughs> right? Now, 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 this stuff us. Now, I'll tell you why. So, Tommy, no, they're, they're legit as fuck. They're right. legit as fuck. So, so, good, so good. Let's, okay, yeah. let's go to the 90s of The reason I like this band are they are. They've got this pop sheen about what they do, which they know will appeal to the masses they know that they're not they're not idiots and they've they've, yes. they, they've been a band as far as i'm aware since they were kids right the same guys in school doing their thing now the reason i really like them is that every single one of their songs has art it, it, it is art i, I believe I'm, I'm a big fan of them so i would say that but even their bubblegum pop sheen songs when you look be- look beyond the surface they're not Coldplay. 
that they're, they're doing actually you know, interesting like when you read the stuff. I don't, I don't, yeah, the I lyrics don't or, or interesting production or, or maybe the, the record they just dropped, it's, it's, it's very diverse. There's different styles of production. It's not an Ed Sheeran record. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't think they hate anything they've done or regret anything. I think right, they've actually gave a shit. I think that they're, they're making cool shit and it has mass appeal. Tommy yes. Emmanuel, and I know this guy very well. We're, we're, by the time this podcast comes out, we're actually going to be doing a US tour together in December. Get him on the podcast. Tommy Emmanuel on the yes, podcast. That, yes. that would be fun, wouldn't it? Well, he That'd does live in Nashville. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. We'll welcome it. We'll welcome it. We'll welcome it. We'd like to. Uh, I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> um, so, so Tommy Emmanuel, the most legit musician I've ever had the privilege of, of working with, because everything Badass. is uncompromisingly his best, and yeah. and everything he'll he, he, like to, to even have this conversation with him. He'll just be like, "Why are we having this conversation?" The answer is <laughs> like, like, the answer is so obvious. Do your best, make amazing stuff. Like, what? Well, well, nothing else matters. The most amazing stuff will rise to the top. It just will if you're consistently putting out. Stuff that is awesome that's all you need why are you trying to blend in with a crowd of people that don't have the capacity to do something that awesome oh, that's, that's the reason in, it's a big base is in, the, in the, because we've obscured before, merit and art in, in before yeah, in, <laughs> yeah no 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 in, actually, in, there in is before more... why th some of the worst music on earth is the most popular <laughs> <laughs> Just saying that, that that actually gets down exactly what i'm talking about with the clout chaser versus artist thing is the um the audience has been trained over shit. We're coming close to a century now to not look at the merits of the performer or any of the work that goes into it, which is not an end all be all by any means. Sometimes the most simplest things can be the most satisfying, but um, <clears throat> they also haven't been trained or to look at just a a actual like depth it's it's all very surface level and that's not something that's like oh i'm fucking super high intelligence music no it's just fucking takes time and care and education like i disagree but I yeah there, there's, disagree. there's stuff out there there's material out there that ticks those boxes of being familiar but also presents itself as art without so, yeah without so a doubt a, what, yes. an, an example if you haven't heard the song relatively new song by the 1975 ironically called part of the band very very simple chord progressions but present in harmony but presented in a way in a structure in an aesthetic in a lyric in a, in, a, in a way the whole thing's produced that is incredibly unique and I, th I think personally when I heard it incredibly deep and something that stands apart when I hear it on the yes. radio that, 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 that's you know, exactly that's why I would say that that particular band are artists right but that, that's, that's, that goes to what I'm saying though is like you have those guys doing their their thing and they're appealing to a pop crowd great god bless them yeah. you have like 500 other artists that aren't trying any of that shit yeah. whatsoever because they think and again I'm, I'm just picking ideas out of the dark here as we're talking and this is not targeted yeah, off, at anyone in particular yeah exactly completely off the cuff you know a lot of people who are trying to quote unquote make it I think and Yuka and I were talking about this actually like yesterday it's like people want to have made it but I don't think they actually want to do what needs to be done to quote unquote make it which is bear your soul work on something that you can really truly stand behind instead they would rather the idea of having a bunch of followers and they're just going to do what that guy did to get those followers and they're going to do what that guy did very let's, very very straightforward let's, let's boil it down let's boil it down what are they chasing what are the clout chasers chasing? I mean, it's in the name clout, but why? What what does the clout provide them? Well, why I, do they want it? Well, because we're we've created a social construct in 2022 and in the past 10 years where you can literally quantify success from the point of view of the general public by literally numbers on a screen. Whereas I've never personally seen that as a metric of success. My metrics of success are Am I able to comfortably travel the world, eat whatever food I want, and play my music to people and have them enjoy it? That's just a, a personal metric it. of success, right. right? That's a personal right. metric of success. And, you know, if you can go around making your living, making people forget about their mortgage and their problems for an evening, that's like a wonderful way and a fulfilling way to Fantastic. spend your time, right? When I, during COVID, when I was in the digital world only, because obviously live shows were cancelled, it was constant mental turmoil. I don't know how you guys do it, like as professional YouTubers, because your only metric, your only energy coming back is from the screen 
and that screen is only being and algorithmically stats, compared yeah. to everybody else. Everyone has different intent. Everyone's born with different various uh, privileges, incomes, locations, ba it, bandwidth, you know, internet speed, time. Maybe they got a sick mum, so they can't do like 10 videos a day. You know, it, when that's your only metric, it's, 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 I think it's a very slip, slippery slope into mental decline it's it's, it's not healthy it's not yes. healthy whereas when you play live if you're able to hold someone's attention in a room for say two hours and have them genuinely kind of present heartfelt comments about how much they've enjoyed the experience that to me is a greater fulfillment artistic fulfillment than getting someone to double tap their phone while they're taking a shit you yeah, because I mean? you see, you see their emotional feedback in real time. But it's sustained and, and it's, through. And it's it's sustained contagious. through an evening. It's not arbitrary. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't compare you, someone it's a, it's clicking a, it's a, like. It's a person to person in real life experience. Yeah, with one hundred percent focus. Yes. It is not. Oh my! Like we're talking right now. I'm not on my phone. If I if I'm on my phone while we're talking, we're engaged in a conversation. I can like something. That doesn't mean anything. Any I haven't real, put well, any. Yeah, or any real attention. There's any real it. attention exactly. Yeah. Yet we're in a world where we treat the the um where, where we treat receiving that attention as something incredibly fulfilling when it's really not like it, it's it's just not it's candy it's sugar there's no substance to that yeah. if you're really truly chasing clout or attention right as you, as you call it that is not that is not actually how to get it how to get it is to actually move someone like like give them something real give them actual substance and that comes I, from to ideally, circle it right back someone connecting on a deep level about something that someone's put a lot of effort into and having a s sustained attention and i think that that attention is just getting diminished and diminished and diminished so and diminished. that that the that's why i love live because they're locked in a room they have to look at you that, that, like, that attention's getting diminished because of the social programming around social media and it's, it's not. It's, it's yeah, not. It's, it's not well. inherently intentional. They're no, they weren't like. Oh fucking! We're gonna get out there and we're gonna make sure everyone's attention spans are short. It is a a symptom of them just wanting to have volume and make money off of the volume. Yeah, it's a symptom of like four <clears throat> companies competing for ad space. Yeah, uh, and and the technology now can facilitate that speed. And the faster the tech responds, the faster, you know, we respond. And it, and it's, yeah, and, and the, it's, but it's the way pitched, that they... It's pitched to the, an audience as convenient. Oh, when, oh, this is just really short, really quick. It's not going to yeah, bother you so much. The, real, real easy and convenient. They're utilizing these devised uh, addiction mechanisms that give the users repeated dopamine rushes. And so that's why it's like... They have gambling the, psychology. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, and, and the, that's why that that's why the attention span of culture has diminished, and it, it's because the addiction mechanism is more efficient when it's like ten things, thirty things in a row that are right there for you. Yeah, to to really zoom out, but one of the last people to truly change the world on a profound level is the person who invented. Or, or proposed the idea of bottomless scrolling, like endless scrolling. Yeah, that guy, wants Whoever, to, that guy uh, is face... miserable about having done so. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, have you read about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We've had this conversation before, it. yes. Yeah, yeah. He's. I he's mean, he's changed the world. He's changed everything. He's changed how our kids are going to be, like, programmed. It's, he re he yeah, reviles profound. what he's done. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. I hope he does. <laughs> it sucks. It's true. It mean, really sucks. I mean, I mean, so... What if you? What if you? I didn't? segued a little bit into. I just fucking love live music. So sorry. No, I, no, I you're, you're good. You're good. You're good. That, that was partly me. Um, mm. So when you say bottom, bottomless scrolling is poisonous and everything, <laughs> like let, let's pretend for a second it's completely chronological. Like it's gonna still essentially be bottomless scrolling at that point. So I don't know how mu how much you'd want to fucking. I don't know. I don't know how much you want to throw it on him necessarily. It, see, it seems well, like do, it, do, are are you, are you, are you ta are you taking my point though with respect to how the get, get the, a little the, closer are you taking my point though with, with respect to how the uh, addictive qualities of delivering oh yeah without a doubt delivering like unless I don't know about the, calling them products but you know short little bits of you know, 10 seconds home impressions becoming impressions. Addi becoming addicted to to things that require very very little attention yeah that's a, that's a, and a, then the, having the, the impressions infinite access to things that require very very little attention yeah i no, I, I fully agree with that point all, all i'm saying is the bo attention bottomless is scrolling the guy is fucking like it, it 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 was gonna happen anyway just through the nature of if you're on a website like facebook 
and it, it's like literally your timeline, your news feed is everything chronologically that's happened based upon what you've chosen to follow. Yeah, but my, it's, my, it's, my, it's just giving you an infinite scroll of more of yourself. More of what it knows you already. No, I'm, I'm saying to. even if you take that out of it, just because of the amount of shit that's on there, it'll be effectively infinite because you're never going to get to the bottom well, of everything. Well, two two oh. things about that. Like number one, if you're my aunt with like 30 Facebook friends, she's going to reach the bottom pretty quickly. That's just like how it goes, like chronologically before it starts repeating. Saying, but, but number two, aunt, no, that's not. No, no, that's not. Has, that's not the case. You see, you see posts from things you don't follow. Yeah. I'm Thousands. taking Mike's example of if it was chronological and there yeah, wasn't the bottom yeah. of the scrolling we're, we're and it was just chronological and you all you were seeing was stuff that from things you followed like back how it used to be yeah. my aunt would reach the bottom because she doesn't have that many people she would follow right yeah. that's one thing the other thing it's it's more on Casey's point it's not the bottom of the scrolling itself it's that it's the bottomless pit and the downward spiral into a basically uh, real time and sustained change and potentially permanent change of your actual personality based on what the machine thinks you want to be looking at. That is that's, that's huge. That's a huge thing. So so every 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 three months I delete my my cookies and cash and like start on my YouTube again, like so it's all just completely random generic stuff. <clears throat> once every three months, because I know that. I click on a video, it goes to something else, it goes to something else. Suddenly, I might inadvertently change my entire personality to be someone who's absolutely obsessed with all the species of raccoons. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't know, and, and I feel like that's not something I've seeked out consciously. I don't like the idea of that. I could become a massive bigot. You know what I mean? Just because YouTube <laughs> because just you sends me... Because you want to know about raccoons? Uh, yeah, Those it, particular <laughs> breeds of raccoons. I was taking a different yeah. example, but you could find, find a parallel, I, I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, two, we're two letters away from yeah. racism, so I'm like... But, <laughs> It's, it's the, really, the, the, I, I, the I, point I, being, like, it, it just, to, just to bring that back to music a second, I don't want to come across, and I, and I don't feel like, the kind of bitter musician, which I have met many of, typically they're, they're of the older generation. I see, I see you looking at me. Where they, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking off camera, dude. Um, yeah. You know, you have to accept that that's where the world is, but I still stand by my analogy of the semicircle. All of that happens in the second half of the semicircle. Catering your art to a short attention span, a bottomless scroll, whatever. Trash. It is, it, trash. it is how no it is how it is it's necessary Fig, yeah no. figure that out don't it's complain about trash. it whatever but please do not affect that first half of the semicircle don't affect the art in the first place you know what i'm saying like the art has to be genuine uh h how you push that out there you can cut it into short clips you can make it portrait whatever you want to do blah 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 that's fine let's not be bitter about it but but uh, with younger people, I see that affecting the first half of the semicircle. You know, I see them them dumbing their stuff down, dumbing the art down, dumbing the content down, yes. instead of just maybe dumbing down the distribution. I, there's I, a difference. I, lucked, I think there's a I very real out, difference, and people I, should. I, I feel I maybe lucked out that. the one time as far as dumbing down the distribution. Um, <clears throat> with I, I wanted to have I talked to you about the Perlovsky book at all? I've talked about it a shitload on the channel, oh, so but. Good. Like, I've okay. not even read it. <laughs> it's so good, I haven't read it. That's the, that's the clip quote. Um, but I um, but, on but, camera. But why? Uh, yeah, but fucking, why? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, it, it's this whole thing about fucking... Uh, Can I'm not, not going to dive into it. No, no, fuck oh, Let me finish the story first. I like to be the guy who Let says Let me finish it, the fucking story first. I've not read it. Yeah. <laughs> this formula of you two on this podcast is great. Yeah. <laughs> the, these guys watching don't truly know Casey yet, and it's just going to be a fantastic journey to watch. I agree. I agree. I can't be, I can't be fully known publicly. <laughs> All right, fuck, you don't want to fuck, be. Okay, don't fuck, be. Yeah, fuck, fuck, fuck One you. Day. Okay, so <laughs> sorry, dude. We keep interrupting. I'm sorry, so, bro. It's, okay. it's his channel. Show him some respect. Come on. <laughs> no, fuck it. Okay, so fucking um, the one thing I did as far as like quote unquote the cheap bullshit distribution, but actually got like the proper thing out there. I did the whole like uh, fucking. The rock is dead. And then threw up like a fucking thumbnail of uh, fucking Dave Grohl and some other motherfucker that everyone's going to click on and have me there all smug looking like whatever. And I just cut myself, you know, in the middle of a, a fucking word. And um, I went off and talked about this fucking this Perlovsky thing. You know, and that video performed surprisingly well because, like, it, it's not just based upon title and thumbnail. That's that's a big part of it, but if people drop out relatively early in the video, it, it the video will sink, and they stuck around. And I actually got a lot of really good feedback from it that I was I was really really happy with. <coughs> it's so fucking difficult to find that fucking happy place though. It's so fucking difficult, especially with the type of. 
I'm more more on the idealist side, so fucking I, I want to get more of that pot, the conversation we're having here about trying to educate the fucking audience to take some more first of all personal dignity but personal responsibility towards what they choose to consume and it's really fucking difficult well, to it's hard the when noise. it's hard when the tech companies don't want them to change that habit no shit and they're in charge of what they see no fucking kidding so i think like i i, I hope that the younger people i'm just gonna say gen z i'm 33 so i guess i'm millennial i'm gonna say gen z i just hope that they understand why they're being shown what they're being shown and 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 understand the delivery method and I sh i'm sure they do because i don't doubt you know if i want sick graphics or sick videos or whatever i'm gonna hire gen z because they know gonna, what time it is i'm gonna right? hire mid journey that's what i'm gonna fucking hire mid journey yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I i i actually tried well, I'm that i'm addicted to mid journey dude it's 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 amazing dude, it's, it's, so good. It's, so, it's so good are, are you are hey, you cold fucking... holiday you've uh you're you're irrelevant <laughs> That's it's an inside, but it's like okay. Do you know Colton? I don't. You no. should. He's he the man. he did okay. he did the graphic work for our latest single for Betrayal. He did, oh, sick. He did the cover art on all my stuff. He's ex awesome. Except, he, for, oh, the, dude. except he, for the first like really two. Good. Well, my the, the artist I used for my last album, my live album, uh, incredible digital artist. He's very young from Finland, and I found him because he just did some like fan art, and I was like, dude, this is awesome. Do you want to do the whole? Fuck. Album, okay. Right? Yes. That's, that's so the good. best. But but yeah. then but then we're looking at the Shout next one. Shout out to Rage. Right. We're, we're, the, the the next one we're we're, we're looking at doing. It's like we're going to conceptualize it through AI and then he's going to create yeah. something yes. based on that. You know what I mean? Yes. I think it's, an, it's a, that, that, that whole stuff is amazing. Almost like it's a powerful, useful tool. Oh, it's so good. Um, I've been using it to like get something started with and then I bring it into Illustrator or Photoshop and yeah. tweak it according to yeah, what, yeah. My, Do you what, what I, I missed. We, I think you were surprised just like that little Photoshop change that I did on your one. I think you were a little shocked. I mean, I know how to do that. It's just... I didn't agree that I, I didn't expect to agree that it would be better and I did yeah. is, it's, it's amazing I gotta show almost, it to you almost like I have to obsess over I, thumbnails I worked, constantly I worked on that one in Photoshop and Illustrator though that wasn't the way it came out but for the record oh I didn't know that yeah oh okay oh, yeah. I, thought, I thought that was straight mid like, do you mind if I put it on screen so people know what the fuck we're talking about yeah I'll send it to you I, I got it I got it I'm, yeah, I'm planning I, on I doing think, I think there, there's one thing I, I, I want to harp on here and it goes back to the the poisoning of our attention spans. Mm, poison, delicious poison. <laughs> yeah, through uh, through these these addiction mechanisms in, in social media that make people addicted to getting constant dopamine hits from shorter and shorter little clips of things. The the thing that I think is the most dangerous about that is that in order to benefit from the experience of art, you need to give it your attention, and if Art is, as my friend Anthony, who we're going to have on at some point soon, regards it to be, if it is what he regards it to be, as I do as well, which is the fuel for humanity, art, then, such, and, such and, and art, terrible, art requires, there's, we'll yeah, anyway. there's got to be, but art, requ <laughs> <Petrol>. art requires, <laughs> the petrol for humanity. Art, requ art requires that our attention be intact, and if our attention isn't intact, then we can't benefit for, we can't, we can't reap the infinite benefits of the experience of art. That's, yeah. that's what scares me the most. That's, that's what's good because if you look many, at all many, the greatest yeah. social revolutions in history have been supplemented to a in, enormously efficacious degree. It's a feedback by, loop. By art. And if we don't have attention for art anymore, then we're fucked. If we don't have fucking taste for art, for that matter. One of many things that are an unknown at this point. I, I think it, it'll be very interesting to see where things go when there's a, a next generation and a next generation and technology gets more and more integrated and quicker and... and I See, I'm, I'm terrified <coughs> but about it. But don't but, you but, think... But, no, but, but the reason I do with the short, you know, the short life that I have, the reason I what I do is, is produce is because all I can do is someone who doesn't believe in coercion. All I can do is be the change. I hate to say this. It's so arrogant <laughs> sounding. But be the change you want to see in the world. Try at least. Put that in the thumbnail. <laughs> well, it's the uh, only okay, thing the you way, can do way, as you can, only, you, you, you can only lead by example and do what you want to do. The way, you, the you way, you by make example, it it's, the only way, it's the only way. If you, if you yeah. want it to sound less douchey, say it starts with me. That this fucking, It starts, it, actually, it, how about it starts with you? <laughs> If I get no with you, point listener, point listener. I love you. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely muted. Point, point, point and say it starts with you. Fuck you, listener. <laughs> I, I, I respect you. I respect your individuality and your tastes. Oh, even, I do too. Even, even I if think, I which is like also them. why I have the respect one to of, tell you to go fuck yourself to your my, face. One of my favorite moments of our last podcast was when I went like this to Mike, and I think I'm gonna make it a thing. Beautiful. Like I think every podcast, yeah, yeah. He, when he says some dumb shit, I have to oh, just fuck. be like, oh, because oh, it's that, only me. That's all you say. <laughs> yeah, it's all you say. It's, oh, it's all I say. Like how you put. That actually would explain like why I'm successful list, on YouTube. That trash, <laughs> the trashest tier list that you ever made, that you made. You have to be more specific. <laughs> you, know, you have to have to just hard hard left here, or sli- slightly relevant. Yeah, but I have to ask you guys a question. So I've my, a lot of what I do is live, like touring. Right? Yes, now, yes. I lo- love love traveling, love touring. Although post COVID, it's a little bit like wild doing it because it's a very risky thing. It can be a very high investment, and then you know it could kind of fall apart. I'm really curious yourself as a YouTuber, yourself as a producer. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest video on the internet. Sorry, I'm done. Is that? Is that? I'm done. So we uh, we stay uh, we stay at home attention. and we make content like virgins. Okay. So, so no, no 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 no. So I just want to ask, given everything that we've said about attention span, like what do you genuinely feel is the future of live concerts? It's gonna continue to be a thing for a long time because there's like really zoom out. Like like, is there a future in live shows? One thousand percent, yes. Well, why? I don't understand why that's even a question. What COVID? It, it, like, no, nothing to do with COVID. Like, if, we, if we're, I'm, if I'm we're zooming re- out, if really we're zo- zoom out. Like, like, oh, if like, we're is it sustainable? Out, like, is it something that people are going to continue to be interested yes. in when we're talking about the degradation of attention? Yes. If, if we're zooming out, yeah, like it's a being, millennia. It's, no, it, sorry. No, but if we're zooming out, like a million years. Well, no. When we when we've literally evolved. Like, if we're zooming out that far... Or to where holograms away. are as... No, I, I'm just saying. So, for example, the movie theater, right? Life. I like going to the movie theater. Yeah. And I've noticed recently, it, over the past, say, five years, the amount of people that are getting their phones out and checking their text in the middle of a movie God at a theater... God damn it, pisses me off, yeah, dude. But that's increasing a lot uh, to the point where when I was on tour with Trevor Gordon Hall last time we were here, I mean, we went to... be fair, most we, movies. So. We went to, like, the movie theater and it, we, we had to leave. Because it was literally impossible. Like kids were just like on their phone, like like talking on the phone and stuff. Wow. And I see a bit of that at shows, not not nowhere near as much, but you do see th- this, this sometimes this itch of people going going on their phones. I know? regard this it's, as a big problem. I regard that here. Not it, just let me say. Oh, because it's okay. you just get to say everything. <laughs> I regard this as a big problem, right? Like there's there's two ways of doing this. If you're there and you want to record it, or like on video or whatever, okay. Okay, no, hold on, hold on. There's, 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 there's recording it. There's, oh, you just get to say everything, Mike. There's, well, let me finish. There's, there's whole, there's, there's opening up your camera and recording it, and then putting it down. Mm-hmm. There's the other one, which is the one that pisses me off, which is the opening up Instagram, clicking story, uh, doing the, th- the recording the bit or however long it is, and then sitting there for like 10 minutes afterwards doing the tags and not and you're and you're not paying attention to the show anymore yeah. you're tagging the people you're doing this you're waiting for it to upload that's the one that pisses me off like i also personally absolutely despise trying to record the experience that i'm having yeah i'm having the experience do you think also, and, and, I, dem- I, I and totally i think it's diminished i think it's diminished by trying to record it on this shit thing, yeah. It's a, and then re- watch it later as though you can relive it because you can't. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's you need to pay same, attention yeah. to the experience you're having, not try to capture it to relive it later because that's not reliving it. Watching a video is it's not reliving it. Okay, so also, Mike, you how, how many people in your be movie theater on Instagram after you record the video? How many people God in your damn. movie theater put their camera up to the movie screen and then recorded it? Uh, and then uh, I'm, not, it? I, I'm not. I don't think I've ever witnessed anyone recording the movie. So that's it's, where I would draw. That's where I would draw a distinction in. in in your in your movie theater, you're having a prepackaged product that is usually pretty garbage nowadays. Most movies suck, um, but those people aren't having their Completely attention held. Completely unnecessary to okay. Sorry. No, it's, it's actually very necessary with what you're talking about because we're talking about live music with a person in front of you. I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm bringing this from the subject of attention spans. <clears throat> Heard me. Uh, and and if, even if, still, if like, people, you know, like I find myself even more inclined to watch an episode of a show than a movie on a streaming service because same, yeah. I get bored now. 
Yeah, but but what I'm trying I'm to say is trying the, not the, to be you know. the attention yeah. span aspect yes. is what we were talking about earlier with that real person up there actually fucking performing it right in front of you one time. This is the only time it's ever going to be done this way, as, as opposed to a yeah. movie, which I mean, some movies are better than others, but most of them today, again, are shit. So you can go back to the next day and have the exact same experience, basically. Yeah, it's it's fucking especially in the digital media age. That's that's what, that's what I'm trying to say is like. I, I don't think it's apples to oranges of the movie no, it's theater not. experience. No, of course. To, it was just an analogy <laughs> to say that, you know, I'm noticing a decline in Without people's ability to yeah. focus on X. Even even when they're at this experience, at this <clears throat> venue, to have an experience unique to being at that venue. Like, the, I mean, obviously going to a movie theater with this enormous screen and this however many thousands of dollars of... Um, you know, the treated room acoustically, the incredible sound system. Which you, and usually they pay is like overkill, 20. honestly. I think it's spectacular. It's it, so it, immersive. It, 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 can, it can be, but most movies don't deserve it nowadays. It's not, it's not even worth it. Let me, I, I don't want to change the subject. It's, okay, just fair, that, fair. It's, just, it's just that you're paying to have this, you're paying a lot usually to have this really unique experience that's not replicable at your house. And <clears throat> that's then, true. Yeah, and then... So I mean, in, in those reg- in that regard, they're the same because they're not repli- replicable at your house. But then to not give it the attention that you paid for in its in its unique moment is that's pretty like, fucking stupid. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just really uh, another another slight parallel. I have the I, I, yes, I guess you could associate this to attention spans somewhat, but it's more of an interesting study into what people like to do with their time. You know, the, uh, the circuit that I play on, the kind of venue size that I play on, I see a lot of uh, tribute bands playing those same venues. And it's almost, I don't know, I talk to the promoters and it's just like, oh yeah, we'll guaranteed sell out when we put these guys on. Of course, just yeah. a cover band of another artist, another, and it gets to the point. There's a venue in if, Bristol. If in my I ever hometown. give up, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the tribute band, <laughs> right? But I mean, <laughs> I, I I feel like there's this there's this 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 comfort in in stuff like that. This comfort in your phone, comfort in your world. There's comfort in yes. seeing the tribute band. There's that is totally th- accurate. There's there's I wouldn't say a fear of risk. That sounds completely ridiculous, but well, that's certainly no, no, honestly, you know, like, like in, when in you the say future, fear of risk, that, that's actually true. The, the, risk, the audience is risking their their time and attention towards something new that they something might not original like. that, exactly yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I, I totally agree so the, the, the scene that I that I tour in a lot of the time when I'm doing like solo stuff it's at venues that are maybe like I don't know say there's like 300 seats when I go out and play and play solo in like a small little theater right when I play with other artists it's 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 bigger rooms right but say I'm going out there doing a little headline acoustic show I mean I'll say I'm in like Cincinnati in this tiny cute venue very cool like a jazz club say I'm in like the Dakota in Minneapolis so somewhere super cool. The, it, de- the decoder. The decoder. The decoder in <laughs> Minneapolis. Wicked the, venue, by the way. Best catering ever. Freaking awesome. I just love how you say you put an R at the end of words thank that you. have an A. Can we, can we, thank you, Casey. Can we, can we just take, like, five minutes and just have you, like, say things in a British sure. accent? My money don't jiggle jiggle. It folds. Ew. Ew. Oh, ew. Ugh. Me can all my fiancé are like that. Oh, I'll, just, I'll just go through them all and you can put them in your title or whatever. It's Tuesday, <laughs> isn't it? All right, what's all this then? It's a bit chilly. Bottle of water. Is that enough? <laughs> Good? Bottle of, bottle of water? It's easy. Bottle of oh. Water. Ah. Water. Bottle of water. Bottle of water. In it. In it. In bottle it. of water in it, Gov. Yes, I'm British. Are you taking the piss? Did the, are you taking the piss, mate? <laughs> You're trying to right. say, you say taking, that one more time for taking, the cringe. Are you taking the piss, mate? <laughs> It's like it's that's, a, that's it's gotta a be made. That, it's like you're that's twi- the bug before the titles. You know what I mean? Just that. Yeah. No context. Are you taking the piss? Then mate? explosive yeah. title sequence, then intro, <laughs> then episode. Yeah. You're gonna put on that fucking that fucking ghost whatever song by Nightwish, the dun 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 Ghost Love Score. Yes. I love it. Yeah, I, love I love that, that song. So much. The song is awesome. Oh my god, I saw them play that with with the original singer in uh, Hammersmith Apollo in London. Did it sound Confetti like... Confetti cannons coming out on that? Oh, it was just beautiful. Did it sound, so like, legit? Yes. Fuck, okay, I would love to I see mean, that. I mean, I was 15, but yes. Okay, yeah, it was Nightwish, so. dude, Nightwish is... Yeah, Nightwish they're is awesome. an expensive ass... They're, oh, their live show is ridiculous, yeah. yeah. They're awesome. We just found out that... How the, fu- uh, how the fuck does such a niche band like them or Epica... Get so much fucking money. Okay, really fun that. fact. Yeah, first of all, uh, I had the uh, I had the, say, the, yeah, the, the the whistle player in Nightwish played on my first album. 
Oh, no Fun shit. fact. Fact number two about how they get so much money. They're from Finland and the government pays for things. Oh. I mean, they're also a massive band. That's probably how they get the money. I mean, yeah, they're, they're not. Isn't it crazy unknown. how Finland's just like pays for things? It's so yeah. Good. I mean, this uh, this thing that you guys know about that I'm going on in January is this writing camp. Uh, I mean, this is kind of relevant, I guess. Uh, you you say the, the anarchist is about to be paid by the Finnish government. It's incredible. Is the that the going irony. On? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't his taxes. Mike. It was someone else's taxes. <laughs> Makes it even better. And, and, <laughs> And everyone from whom they were collected consented. That's true. Oh, okay. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> because there's five people that live not, there. Not, they all consented. Yeah. Not, not, all not, of them were called not. be like, hey, are you cool if we, if we pay for Casey's airfare and put him up for two weeks? All five people who live in Finland were like, yeah, that's sick. We want, Casey, we want to pay for Casey to make music for two weeks. <laughs> Yes, they no, so value that's what's music in Scandinavia. <laughs> it's, Finland, Finland it's, ter- it's terrific. No, I mean, it, it is, though. It's terrific. And, and the Finnish government is paying for me and uh, Paddock, one yeah. of my best friends who's going to be on here soon, and uh, and maybe Dre, yeah. if, if he accepts, <laughs> yeah. to go and work on music for two weeks. And it's tac- it's it's... It's the Finnish government's, government's paying for it. So for about four years, I toured a lot. Well, I, I, even to this day, with an amazing Finnish guitar player, singer-songwriter called Pet- Petteri Sarioli. He's actually how Yucker and I met. They're in a band together. Yucker. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, so when we toured... <laughs> when, when it's we, like a verb. Yucker. <laughs> y- yucker. When we, yucker. When we toured together... Um, Pete would just like invoice the Finnish government for all his airfare and hotels and everything and they just pay him back. So we go on tour and he'd just get all his expenses reimbursed. It's crazy. Okay, I, lo- I love you. Well, it's kind of like a tax write off in always... America. When, when, it's not, not the same, not I know. It's not the, the, the pay for You're literally getting a direct yeah. refund. Yeah. When, when Yuka God. always introduces himself, he's always, you. I'm like, well, shit. Yeah, you first go. syllable up, everything else down. In, in, yeah, but, but it's like, it's like so hard. I'm just like, it's like, like, whoa, man. Yeah. In, it's in, like, like, in the Finnish language, every first syllable is emphasized. Yeah. It's like which thinking, is, which you, is thinking you're getting Yuka. the Christmas present you want and then being disappointed. It's like, oh, go, go, go. Poiskela, <laughs> poiskela. <laughs> He's about to be here. Cool can we can't be making fun of Finns without. I'm not a trying here. to make fun of him. It's just like the the first time it happened, Yuka. I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like I have to pay like extra attention. It was so simple the entire time. Yeah. The way he overemphasizes it, I'm like trying to pick up like every fucking nuance of everything. Yeah. There's yeah. some key <laughs> phrases that you'll have to learn in Finland, like uh, uh, Oh yeah, that means. Um, it sounded Chinese. I totally forget. All in. Okay. Kokonan ulos. All out. That's I know, all, that's I know this is about to get banned in China. The only one I know is uh, Tianima. What's that? It's fuck your mother. Oh, goodness. Chinese? <laughs> yeah, that is Chinese. Oh. Tianima. Goodness. Yeah, yeah I, do, welcome. I, I, I do. No plan Billy on... Billy broadcast for this. Uh, <laughs> for this. I do plan on getting better at, at Finnish before would you, we would go you like in more January. Whiskey? Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, fuck it. You, you are weirdly obsessed with the Finnish language, and I think it's kind of cool. It's because it's the coolest fucking language. Yeah. It's the coolest sounding language there there is, and, and it I doesn't probably, have anything in common with any other language. We both grew up with Finnish <laughs> Finnish metal. Seriously, it's not. Yeah, sure. well, that's yeah. yeah. My my whole childhood uh, was spent with Hammerfall in Flames. Well, Dutch that's, that's Swedish. That's also Swedish. Okay, Sonata. <laughs> okay, Sonata. Okay, all right. Fuck, fucking asshole. You ready for the yeah. uh, Nightwish? Not Arctica. Um, stamina, Diablo, Winter Sun, uh, Winter Sun, St- fuck St- yeah, Stamina uh, is pretty Bodum. fucking legit. Stamina is one of my favorite bands on earth to this day. Children of Bodom are Finnish. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yes. know that. Oh, Bodom is Lake Bodom in Finland. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just always thought Bodom like fucking like satanic whatever thing going on. No, no it's Lake, lake. Bodom is, yeah. is just yeah. Bodom is a lake. Yeah, oh, okay. a lake. I, I can name. I mean, murders or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, f- Finnish, uh, Nordic music in general, s- since I was a kid, was always always been my favorite. Same, dude. And it's it's so funny to me when you see people from Nordic countries, you mu- professional mu- musicians from Nordic countries come to America and see Ameri- American musicians who are professionals. They're so embarrassed by how poor their technicianship is. Right? Yes, I. Uh, but like, why can't they play the? Why are they so shit at their instruments? I have some examples, <laughs> uh, some examples of this that we will talk about off air. But yeah, they're, 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 can, they're, can, you, can you wait? wait can, can you can you say geez. them without saying names? I just know people in Swedish and Finnish metal circles that don't like, you know, bands from other countries because they're like, why can't they play? 
Yeah. They'll just watch them and be like, why do they sound so bad live? I yeah. don't understand. Yep. And and I, actually, I saw, this isn't true of this particular gig, because I, I remember seeing Winter Sun open for Arch Enemy, who are also Swedish, and they're yeah. insanely tight, right? So this isn't uh, anything about Arch Enemy in, specific, in particular, but when I saw Winter Sun, I, I, I remember just being like, oh my God, they're tight. Like like Temu uh, on on the guitar, holy crap, he's amazing. The drummer, I don't I don't recall his name, insane. These guys are just like human metronomes. Oh, and man, I yeah. know there's a lot of backing tracks and layers and all of that, but I, I feel like yeah, but the, that, the, that's the parts fine. That knowing the Finnish, really knowing playing. people like Yuka and uh, and Petri and and these Yuka. these Finnish guys who I've I've worked with over the years and toured with and and got to know, they're just they're just so well educated and they're so proficient and they're so tight yeah. and then you come to the disciplined come, they're also very disciplined yeah and, and there's a culture of rewarding the arts in those yeah, you countries can come up. you know mm-hmm. yeah come up we're talking about you come you, up you yeah. hey. 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 Ooh, he's white what's going on hop, hop in front of the camera yeah. quick and wave. come in to introduce yourself pick pick one of them i'll edit it correctly. and then we, so we need I, more I, I more miller lights sure. because this is freedom yeah oh yeah so hop, hop in front of the camera, say hi, and then can you also grab a few mm. Miller Lights? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna run out of whiskey here pretty quickly. You guys yeah. are so cozy. It is super cozy. I was, if I, yeah. if I knew come, there was, come, come, if I knew come. there was yeah, a post hang like, specifically, come sit on my knee. If I knew there was a post hang specifically here at right after this, no, I would have two little <laughs> situations. You're blocking my. Oh, no, I don't no, 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 no one cares. No, no one cares. Oh, no one cares yeah. about Casey's matter. camera. There you go. He's on this camera. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> camera. Michael Dors is my situation. My lord. Hey. Asia Kunosa. Asia Kunos. Kokonan. Kokonan Sisan. It sounds like Chinese to me. I'm not gonna lie. Uxi Koxi Kalma. Han 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 Yuka. Tian Nima. Who are? Who are good? It means good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Joy. What's going That's on? cool. That's one of my favorite things is the Y in Huva. It's a uh, uh, H-Y- H-Y- okay. H-Y- I'm, I'm interrupting very quickly. For context, yes, Yuka will be a guest very soon. <laughs> yes. He will oh, be yeah. a guest. I'll grab some beers. Beautiful man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Love you, Yuka. Fun right, fact, Yuka you. and I have a band with Spencer from Periphery. Oh. Uh, yeah, a synth pop band based fun in it, Vegas. Fun nah, it. That sounds like mega yeah, gay. Yeah, awesome. another, <laughs> another, yeah, another fun fact is Yuka is my, my writing partner here in Nashville. Yeah. And the next three solo songs I have coming out, he wrote with me. It's great. Another fun fact, Yuka played on a track of mine, and Yuka produced another track of mine, which I did with uh, Neural D- DSP, Finnish company. Oh, yeah, fuck uh, yeah. Yeah, so Yuka uh, produced, we did a whole production on a track uh, to demo their loop pedal as part of the quad cortex. So they're killing it, Neural DSP. Awesome guys. Oh, fuck mm, yeah. Awesome, Dude, I'm, awesome I'm, 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 I'm just gonna shocked keep how competing. it seems like they've just randomly erupted out of nowhere. And they're, they're doing it right, man. I'm just 100%. a jealous boyfriend who's going to compete more with you to who has more of a My claim Lord. over Yuka's friendship. <laughs> That's fine. You live in the same town as, now. As Yuka That's says. That's true, yeah. yeah. Ding! I disappear to England every now and then. Yeah. I don't know why. My third world country is... Uh... I, I, was, I was saying to Dre earlier, like, since I've been in the US on this trip, I've had three separate prime ministers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it makes you feel any better, we still haven't had one president in a good while. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, the fucking, yeah. (laughs) Divide the fans. Oh, fuck it, the fuck it, the fuck them. Fuck, fuck (laughs) them. fuck, the fuck the fans, yeah. The fuck. (laughs) Rick Rubin. Mm. Right. Okay. So, Mike, before I had actually learned a lot about Rick Rubin and then all this, he was like, he explained to me a few weeks ago... He was talking about how Rick Rubin is, you know, cringe, and no, Rick not Rubin's that he's not a Twitter great pro- is his cringe. Twi- his Twitter is oh, cringe. Really? His Twitter because is he, definitely cringe. He posts a lot of he posts a lot of stuff that's like these these uh, seemingly not, not a lot vague. of stuff exclusively a an image made with a fuck. It's all white with a fucking black border, like really intentionally has this little like cursive ass italics text of some fucking little nugget of what he thinks is wisdom then a dash and says Rick Rubin. Oh, I I have um some some jokes with some friends about other friends who do this in their own marketing. It's, oh, it's pretty fun. Oh yeah. It's definitely as we say in England it's not cricket. It's just not cricket. What is that? Not mean? even close to cricket. Uh, it's just not the done thing. You know what I mean? It's oh, just okay. not not cool, you know. It's just a little bit yeah, to quote like yourself say. where you where uh, it, where on a platform your name is right above what you post. With your picture. 
picture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have uh, some friends that do that on pictures of themselves for the 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 yeah. As, yeah. A, as so a joke, as a joke. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about the 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 crediting the self in the in the in the graphic especially in the for things where he's thing with the with the posts and all that I get but man, especially I, I watched... especially the, th- the some some of the things are so obviously he's not the first guy that like came up with this like obviously hey, can, it doesn't can, have can... to be that way though and, okay go ahead because I, I just want to talk about Rick Rubin okay we've got to talk okay. about Rick Rubin if you okay. want to talk but I, I understand that we also need to get some clickbait shit going on so we need to talk about this whole backing tracks thing yeah, yeah. Time the Eddie Trunk controversy. Yeah, fucking, like, I, heard about I, I just, I just want to say real quick. Then I'll make it quick, right? I promise. Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so associated with you now, on online. Do You're not that this? associated with me online. I mean, we're co- okay. Depends whatever. I'm website. co-hosting this thing with you. Whatever. Okay. And um, I actually, actually think after watching Rick Rubin's Joe Rogan interview a couple weeks ago, I thought he was spectacular seems like one of the coolest dudes on earth and mm. i went back and listened to every th- most of his productions i could find yeah and after understanding his his mindset holy shit is he yeah he's un incredible like next like just magical human being and it made me take a second look at everything that you showed me that take, you take, thought was take, vague take and... a little take a little bit of a break just pump the brakes a little bit what? Why, <laughs> prick? He's he's not he's not the most magical fucking human being in the world. But he he has <laughs> <laughs> he has he has fantastic intuition, without a doubt. He has insanely good intuition. He's always been very intuitive. And, he, with that. and he's and he's so good at but he, but most people he with almost killed like himself that? in a house fire because he's a f- fucking detached from society. But, but you guys I mean, keep talking about Rick Rubin while I just take a leak. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and when I come back, I want to hear you still talking about Rick Rubin. It's just that within the context of of having of really having come to a a good understanding of his entire approach to production and his his entire oh, so, and by the way, same. I, I watched his, the whole episode. His entire worldview on art. Yes. Okay. It, it made me. It made me. Uh, develop an incredibly deep appreciation for saying things as simply and as derivatively often as he as he does in those little infographic uh, quote things that you're talking about uh okay okay so i, I get like after I, 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 get, I was like i want to i want to be best friends with that guy i get what you're you saying know? i get what you're saying and i could pr- probably be friends with him i don't know it depends upon he seems like the coolest hang to me i don't know that he seems like the coolest hang to me to me he really seems like the <laughs> he coolest either hang. seems like a fabulous hang or the worst hang to me like one or the other i'm not i'm i'm still not sure yet i think that that one of the he one, did get the, sucked into veganism for how long yeah well talk to mike about the science behind veganism. <laughs> yeah but i think that one of the one of the greatest By the way, for pro- the record i don't think he's a terrible human being okay not, sure. not even and i don't think he's a bad producer either but one of the greatest gifts a producer can have is to understand other human beings sufficiently that they can pull out of who they're producing yeah the best part of themselves that they most people are terrified of exposing the most insightful part of them. The, I'd, the even part go, of themselves I'd even that go a step further. The world I'd even go a step every- further. I'd even go a step further. He saw things that other people weren't seeing in, in themselves. Gra- in, no, in greater society, and was able to actually innovate multiple times as a producer in his career. Like, oh, I'll give in, him that credit. Yeah, even in, for in the drastically that- different uh, genres. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, from from yeah. hip hop, like basically being one of the founding producers of rap, not hip hop, but rap. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware. To producing yeah. Slayer, right? Yeah, yeah. Who actually, I won't I'm, say I'm, my I'm opinion I'm giving of. him all of this credit, but, yes, without a doubt. Yeah. Which, by the way, I also did in the front of my video. But there's something I think that a lot of producers get, um, and you could probably agree with me here a lot of producers who are obsessed with the technical aspects of being in the studio of recording the artist a lot of a lot of producers who are great at doing those things completely fall short in being that inspirational figure in the studio that the artist needs to to channel that part of themselves that is worth living forever on the recording do you know how you do and that? I, and I've learned, like, I, what I've you, actually... Do you know how you do that? You have to make the person who's performing vulnerable. That That is the secret. <laughs> we can, need that. We need that in the... It's like, probably not It's probably not in fuck. frame, but I'll try Are you still my, talking about Rick Rubin? Kind no, of just, no, yeah. just, just the idea of how a lot of producers get 
get caught up in the technical facets of being a producer, like recording and getting and by the sounds, way, whatever, and completely that, that's the modern interpretation of producing. It is, but and complete. Actually, that's that's a good point, by the way, and completely eschew the the importance of being an inspiring, inspirational figure in the studio to the artist, out of whom you're trying to pull this this apotheosis experience that they would have. Define and apotheosis. Then, He's really becoming, great at that, becoming by the, the way. Becoming the best version of yourself to the extent that you're nearly a god, ver, god-like version I'm pointing of yourself. at you. Apotheosis. Yuka. I was Yuka. saying Yuka is really good at that. Yuka, I have yeah, that's why the, that, the that's fucking, before the, you came up, I was like, you could probably understand fucking oh, yeah. idea for a song. I have the shittiest, cheesiest idea for a song ever. Would you want to? Would you want to fucking produce me through it? Say no. Let's do it. Right, I'll I'll show it to you, and then then you can see whether or not you agree. Let's do it. <laughs> Mike, the importance all of your, all your fucking just like just like tr- waste of time comedic ideas. Like, let's make a whole song. Okay, I'm definitely cutting that out. Definitely doing that. I'm, I'm cutting. I'm cutting out what you said because it's still going to happen at some oh, it's point. Still happen. It needs to be. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. About it. <sighs> Dude, the importance of having a, a producer or someone in the studio that knows how to work with the personality is absolutely huge. That is massive, yeah. So, but you, one hundred percent, like, so, like you, so huge. Because, like, have you uh, noticed a difference in in the in the your happiness? One hundred percent with the final product. One hundred percent. Like the guy I work with, I have this really long relationship with Josh, right? Josh Clark for uh, in in the UK, and we just have such a great relationship. Like we speak the same language, and everything's so efficient, and everything feels great, and we we. But he makes me feel like everything I do is great, even though it's not. But then he knows that it, he can make it sound good. You know, like, like it gives me the confidence. No, no, like it's a very real thing. I like mean, look, yeah. a lot of artists, musicians are very Why are you insecure laughing? He's people. Trying to be vulnerable, yeah. <laughs> fucking asshole. What? Yeah. Like, so are you trying to be vulnerable? I was, I was just like, trying to get some not, clips. You I'm, can not, actually I'm, use, laughing, you know. I'm not, I'm not laughing at Mike. I, I completely agree with you. Mike. It's laughing at you. Okay, I mean, we can make Farkin, Farkin, Farkin dick Farkin, jokes. Farkin, 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 jokes about Farkin. The Farkin. Far, Farkin dick jokes. Exactly, if you want, you know, I was, yeah. I mean, but for, for real, like, it's, it's, a, it's a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, because a lot of people, when they're in the studio recording, they're, they're not confident about what they're doing. It's like, is this okay? Like, am I playing the right thing? Like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And seriously, like, having a, a producer that, that knows the personality and can work with the personality is, like, freaking huge. It's it's like it it's like guitar so players. It's like guitar players. Everyone's a technician. Like you know, there's a million freaking guitar players that can run rings around me, right? But maybe not, I no, will as not as an individual will be able to work with an individual in a very very profound and efficient way. And when you find those people, it's so invaluable. Like really really like all you guys I'd say are in that camp. Like Josh, you and 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 Yuka, I, I would put in that camp. They like thank you. When, when you know the personality and you can you can speak this kind of extra language, you know it it it, yeah. it, it it leads to, it leads to a product that you're both happy with, but also it just makes the process fun. Because why would you want to be a musician if you wanted to treat it like work? You know, it's not supposed to be work. It's supposed to be a freaking good time. A I good can hang, I can tell you, know? you why. I can tell you specifically why. Here we go. Okay. Because you're actually trying to make something that's not just for you and the people who are making it. Well, yeah, but you're trying to express yourself to the fullest, make something that you're really, really proud of, and have yes. have people respond to it. In it's you know, I'm, you're, not, you're, I'm, not, I'm not saying it should be a torturous process, but yeah. at the same time, like, I I don't love reducing it to a good hang. It's that, not reducing all. it to a good hang. It's just it, okay, it, okay, it leads okay. to a way more efficient, first of all, efficient but also effective result. I think as long as the people are, are competent, like I mean, you guys, freaking Yuka, Yuka and Casey, are some of the most the the quickest like engineers, you know, and producers that I've ever worked with. That they're, they're just so quick, right? And that that just that makes everything easy you know would, there's, would there's I, no would, blockage uh, in the workflow would it would it, okay so would a good way of um spitting back at you a phrase that you might agree with facilitating a good flow state yeah okay. yeah okay. It's, it just that's like, actually you, a great way of putting it real quick because flow state is actually typically synonymous with deeper states of uh transcendental and mindfulness meditation and i think that the experience provided by for, for the a record, spectacular Casey producer. actually knows what he is talking about with this. This is not bullshit. He knows yeah, his things. Yeah, meditation. I'm like an expert in meditation, and uh, one of the experiences that should be facilitated by a, a really spectacular producer w- w- with regard to pulling emotions 
out of who they're producing, allowing that person to channel a part of themselves that is worth documenting to give to the world, to enable the world to learn, for, right? Uh, I think that experience is, is one that's, trans, that trend, that's transcendental. In the exact same way, like it's it's flow state is a word that's often used for a lot. Like a lot of times, people who don't meditate will say, "Oh, well, I've heard that it's a lot like you know." And they're let's say they're a musician. Like a couple weeks ago, my friend said this was like, "Oh, I've I've been told that you know when I'm like if I'm playing guitar, and I'm really on it. I'm really on one." I've been told that that's a lot like the experience of Nirvana or global EEG coherence, which is the technical term for a deep state of transcendental or mindfulness meditation. It's actually not it's entirely, not, it's, it's, not, not, it's not entirely true. Uh, yeah. But, but it's, it's, it's worth noting the similarities because that's fair. Yes. Yeah. Because that is, that is a transformative experience. P- people who have never experienced deep states of meditation and who have never experienced that flow state experience that usually <sighs> artists uh, have access to, I don't know what other uh, domains of profession, maybe architects or, or authors, I'd say probably mm-hmm. have access to it. Not just artists, maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe, but, but until you've had that experience and been trans been transformed by it, like the bar for what you expect in a recording situation just isn't really that high. And I, and I had this experience with this artist. I've been producing uh, this girl who um, I'm uh, producing country music for her and she's a great singer and, I like her a lot. You need to get her to hang out again. I will. And she, uh, she needs good influences in her life. She, she, yeah, she is. I, th- I think she's doing fine. But uh, I like her a lot. And getting, and this is this is one of the first times that she she told me that I've actually, like, when we were recording vocals, mm. not to embarrass her, but like you know, all singers for the first few takes is not the one you use, right? It's not the best version of yourself as a singer as a guitar whatever it is you get warmed up you get Dude, I'm like always like take two out of like 10 will end up being the one that most stuff's taken from i'm usually about three but yeah i feel you i'm like yeah. 50 yeah. seriously yeah I'm, I mean, I'm, okay if i'm playing sec- if i'm playing this solo vocal, yeah it's 50 10 seconds of lead vocal <laughs> 10 like well, i'm tracking myself <laughs> singing or any other singer honestly yeah um it's like the it's like usually I'll, I'll make him do it for like 30 minutes before I'm like, OK, this is the best way you can. And now you're really feeling it. Now they're nearly in this state of hypnosis immersed in the story that that one snapshot of the story of the lyric. Yeah. Well, the, it, it takes that. Yeah. Oftentimes I find. And with her, she told me that she's never experienced someone actually trying to get her to feel the anger that she's singing about in in the lyric, yeah. That, so that's, actually, that's be honest, legit. and that's I was legit. like, I was, I kept telling her, I was like, we we're tra- we we're tracking this one vocal for like thirty minutes, and it's like the verse. I'm like, yeah, like you hit the note, the notes are in tune, like you're singing it fine. I just don't, I don't believe a word of it. I don't believe a word of it. Yeah. And then like five minutes later, after we start, we go, we rehash the whole experience that she's talking about in the story of the lyric, which is something about her ex boyfriend that recently they crashed and burned, mm-hmm. and they're back together. They're not, and <laughs> they're not, they're not, and. It wasn't. It wasn't until I actually enabled her to relive the anger of the experience that the actual that the take and also the best technically performed yeah. one emotionally, technically, all of it was there. Yeah. And I had to get that out of her for it to be. And it might good not. Enough. And it might not be the most technically perfect take, but it's the one with it, magic exactly. in a bottle. And, uh, my favorite moments on records are those magic in a bottle moments. If that's like doing a hundred takes of bowing and guitar strings with a load of random effects pedals and one of them sounds amazing and you use that or like when we did that video game pitch Yuka, there was like I was just doing random bullshit and it's sounding like crap but then there were these moments that you were able to like pick out of that you know yeah. or um, another example is um, I just did this record with Tommy Emmanuel, right? We released an EP together, which is like insane to think that like uh, some random blow, blow kid yourself from some more, Mike, dude, fucking. like some <laughs> random kid from Bristol just gets that opportunity. It was quite humbling, right? As so, badass as shit. But but everything was one take, and uh, that yes, was terrifying, yes. right? So that was yeah, like fucking that, scary as shit. Yeah. So I've never done anything like that before, where it was just two guys mic'd up, looking at each other with no click track, and then it's just three, two, one, go, and we play, and then I'm saying. 
shit, Tommy, is this okay? And he's just going, let's go listen. And then, then he's just jumping up and down in the control room being like, this sounds sick, you know. <laughs> and he's listening to the magic in the bottle, but I hadn't trained myself to, to not think about being a, a 2022 perfectionist and thinking like, oh, yeah. if we do 17 more uh, takes, maybe this one will have a better slide but, but, into the but, verse. But, you know? but like in, his, you know? in, in Tommy's mind, he still is capturing that, like, I'm 16 and I just played a thing and it's great. Well, you know, he he's, is, he's, but like, he he's has still, like, more experience about it. than, like, anyone and he knows what works and oh yeah yeah you know we you know he is also a master of playing to who he's playing with so if i'm rushing he will play in a way that makes me seem like i'm not rushing (laughs) and vice versa it's 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 insane like it's insane so he'll tremolo slightly differently he'll lean into it he'll groove and, and and we've played together enough now where we definitely have like a rapport when we do play together so this ep I, I was really worried about it in the mixing process because I didn't want to be the young kid with all the mix notes. I wanted yeah. just to kind of be proud and say, oh, everything's perfect, Tommy. I thought I, I did great, you just know? That, yeah, just but but in, in my heart, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm terrified. I send it all to my producer, Josh, and he listens to it and he's like, Mike, this is great. What are you talking about? Yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's I had, it took me a while to get that confidence in the same way with your singer, right? But the magic in the bottle moments are are truly profound and that and it's those magical moments that make me love making records right and i and i don't make enough records because i'm always on the road but from now on like that experience of doing that with tommy has is pushing me into this different area of wanting to to branch out wanting to be okay with imperfection you know and, and the recording that makes me process want to give you a hug man Oh, that's Honestly. okay. Well, we can just do a long distance cheers. Yeah, we'll, we'll fucking, we'll, but, but no, we'll but this is later. this is something for the listeners, you know, because I know that you are your your fans and a lot of people who are just YouTube generation, just people hanging out watching this kind of chat. You will be musicians and you will be tracking at home and all this stuff, and you will be doing a hundred takes to get this shreddy run to stick on Instagram, you know. Yes. But it, it, it yes. really, when it comes to the magic in the bottle, you know, it it it's not. The reward will not come from that. And that's just from experience because I've done that. I've done so many takes of everything and so much editing. But the most fulfilling experience and, and the, the recordings that, that resonate with people are the ones that are just one take straight through or minimal edits or just trying to capture that humanity. And a really great producer will, will, will do that as sorry, well. Sorry, when sorry, music sorry. I, I com- missed that. Sorry. What was that word you said? Or was that word you said? I said a lot. I was talking for uh, like... I think, I think I started with the... Uh, hu- 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 humanity? Something. Oh, shit. Humanity. Oh, I, actually, I actually said a huge manatee. <laughs> <laughs> like a really big manatee no but but um, when you translate that to modern guitar music and you know casey because we were listening to some earlier like some of my favorite modern bands they're all like jack gardner who played on the track i did he plays with very little compression lots of finger feel lots of dynamics spectacular. and a lot of that is missing in you know modern production especially we're in nashville right now i mean modern country production you have some of the sickest players but I, I feel like sometimes there's a little less humanity in it just in the way it's compressed. It's, it's, it's squashed the fuck. So yeah, 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 exactly. But that's 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 a genre stylistic thing I appreciate. But when it comes to being okay with what you put down, I, I really, really want to advise people, if I can, just this one tiny thing, which is be okay with the imperfections and the little things and the finger noise and the, the stuff that makes you you. Because yeah. like I said at the very beginning of this podcast, there's... There's only one Gojira. There's only one, like, periphery. I just picked random bands that have a unique sound. But there are lots of imitators, you know. Only someone random had dudes to... that I'm friends with. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. <laughs> so, 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 someone has to go out there and put a flag in the ground and say, this is me. And in a world where we can all edit ourselves to instantly sound like each other, there's fewer and fewer people taking that chance. Or that's what it seems from, from my point of view in the guitar realm, right? So, yeah, a little nugget from Uncle Mike. Just just be terrible Uncle on Mike, recording was, and put it out. That's yeah. gorgeous And wisdom. have a good producer to make it sound good at least. You know? that, that's hands <laughs> down, that is hands down that, that whole ti- tirade in quotes. Tirade. It was, my, it was, it was a my, tirade. My, my fucking favorite part of the podcast, frankly. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was great, man. I, th- I think... I like, well, it's true. Like, I mean, I can see Yucker off camera nodding and he's literally like the king of production and he's worked with everyone. So king! I, I, I would yeah. imagine that, that, that he would agree and... But it takes a good producer to tell you to chill with the retakes and the edits. Yeah. You know, like, it is okay. Like, no one cares about that fret buzz, dude. No one cares. Yeah. And and you sh- you will know this because of what you do. 
you you could sweat about your content but you you are okay with letting go because you're clearly like putting stuff out right it's like what we were talking about yuka yesterday about output like man to have output you have to put stuff out <laughs> let's, let's start by like actually releasing the stuff we're working on and not editing it for six months how about that why don't we start with some output you know yeah uh yeah uh tirade that was a tirade wasn't it freaking hell all right i think i think that's a beautiful place to end oh K- wait wait Casey- just, just for your just for your clickbait uh-uh. backing tracks suck be a man <laughs> december opening for tommy emmanuel west coast it'll be out before december for sure nice one Hope yeah, to see you there. hopefully. Fuck yeah. And All check right. out the One Take Vibe record, man. Everything's One Take. It's called Accomplice Volume 3, and it's streaming everywhere. If it wasn't obvious already, Mike Dawes, you're fucking badass. Thank oh, you. Thank Cheers. you, Thank you, you so much for your me. wisdom. And, and also, thanks for introducing this guy to your audience, because <laughs> if if not for the riveting conversation and, and Mike's you know, takes on the music industry, follow this podcast for Casey finally coming out into the world and expressing who he is all right word i think that's it thanks for having me guys see you soon peace Cut. Stop it.